Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld. I'm a principal architect at Dell and one of the leads on the Crowbar project. Um, and this video will show you how to do a advanced or local build uh, using VMs uh, on your uh, system machine. Uh, a lot of these techniques can be used in different ways, uh, so feel free to improvise. Uh, the goal here is to be able to build a Crowbar ISO very quickly uh, so that you can turn around and test it. Um, make sure everything's working. So what I've done here is I have a builder. ISO, I've already uh, installed an operating system. I'm using the Ubuntu 1010 DVD ISO that we use when we build Crowbar with uh, Ubuntu. In this case, I'm going to do it in CentOS uh, to, because I want to show how to build the Hadoop um, a, a Hadoop based ISO. Uh, so I've built a basic machine, 30 gig hard drive, four uh, a gig of RAM, four processors. You can easily push this up. Uh, this has been sufficient for me, and I'm going to power on that machine. While I'm waiting for this to boot, um, it's also important to note that I have already installed um, the VMware tools, and I've mapped some paths. So I've mapped the crowbar path to CTEP crowbar. This is where I keep my ISOs. Um, and I have mapped the source directory to C source. Uh, this is where I keep uh, our copy of all the repos, the dependency repos. It's really handy to have that uh, so I don't have to keep checking it out every time I clean the builder. So part of my normal process is to clean the builder completely and then let it uh, rebuild on a fresh machine. So uh, I've logged in. Note, even though I'm doing the CentOS uh, build, uh, the, the CentOS version of Crowbar, I'm going to be building it on Ubuntu 10.10. So uh, normal process for this. Um, uh, this is not Crowbar. This is my build machine, so I have my own password in here. There we go. So this is set. Um, you definitely have this. One of the differences between this and the way we've uh, configured the Crowbar demos is we're using NAT. This machine actually connects to the internet. And so uh, along those lines, I need to actually follow the steps for building Crowbar. So this is the Crowbar wiki, uh, the build Crowbar ISO instructions, and one of the things that you'll see here is that we actually have to install a whole bunch of tools. Um, we also have to include RPM when we're doing that. That's uh, added, it's added down here, so we're going to include RPM. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure all of these um, app get pieces are installed. Uh, we need uh, git. Now, actually, this snapshot already includes these uh, because that's what I do to prep my image. Nice snapshot after that. But it's always nice to be safe because sometimes I forget one or do my snapshot afterwards. So everything's pretty much ready now. Uh, I think I probably had to add the RPM build. That was the missing piece. And then the next thing down on my list, I'm going to skip building Sledgehammer. Uh, that has not changed, so you can watch our earlier videos for that. Um, but what I do need to do is I need to clone my repos. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that in. Uh, and I, yep. So to do that, So one of the things to do that's really handy uh, here is if you're going to be doing a named repos, obviously you add, you upload your, your keys so that uh, you can you can get through without doing HTTPS authentication. And we're just going to go through a normal Git process. This is this is usually the small part where we're actually getting the code. We're not getting the dependencies yet. Uh, that happens in a later step. I'm going to pause while the crowbar build works. So I'm just going to go in, got to bring in the submodules. And then uh, one of the small things I'm going to do here, uh, I'm actually building off of the Hadoop repos while they're closed. 
so I have a an update for the sub modules that allows me to uh, not not be uh, get past the the closed uh, repos. So uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to uh, flip the camera off while I while I actually put it in. But basically, uh, in the Git config, direct, config, here's a list of all the URLs for the sub modules. Um, these do not include the Hadoop ones. To get to the Hadoop ones, I have to switch to the Hadoop branch, which I can do uh, quite easily by just doing git checkout uh, dash b Hadoop open source build. Okay, so I switch to build. I'll pull that. Pull in the submodules, right? And now, if I um, edit the that config, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of. Uh, here's the um, Hadoop uh, repos that get pulled in when we build Hadoop. Uh, they're all HTTP, which uh, would require authentication. So I'm going to switch that and also add my private key so I can just pull them in. Uh, pretty straightforward, but I'm not going to do that on the video. I'll leave you to your that to your imagination. So this is the same config file, but now you can see I've changed the git, uh, the URLs to use the SSH standard. So now if I come back, I can do a sub module init. <laughs> Got to do the right thing, git sub module init. Good. So now I'm going to actually do an update and pull things in. It's going to go to that config file and pull in all of the uh, repos. Uh, once these, once we flip the bit and make these open source, then you won't need to do this trick. This is strictly a um, artifact of uh, timing because I'm I'm pulling a little earlier than we've we've fully open sourced. Once again, I'm going to pause while we wait for the code to download. Uh, so now I've done the simple part. I've checked out all the code. Um, the next thing that I need to do, well, I'm going to confirm that I'm on the right branch. Hey, look at that. I'm on the Hadoop branch. Um, I could have also checked out the open source, uh, the OpenStack branch, or just left it uh, without a checked out branch, and that would build the base crowbar without an application preloaded, um, or the bar clamps preloaded. And then you can add the bar clamps after the fact. So... In the situation I'm in right now, I can go ahead and start a build for Crowbar in this directory, just build Crowbar. What will happen here is it's actually scanning all the bar clamps, looking for dependencies, building up a list of things to do, but I don't have the pieces and parts necessary uh, to get this running. So what I want to do is, instead of trying to put all the pieces in the right place, I'm going to show you how to customize that so that you don't have to move around files every time. I do this in my home directory. I'm going to bring over a file I've already created called uh, build crowbar conf. So this is one of the places where I rely on my shares. Dot build crowbar conf. I'm just going to bring that in and then I'm going to let's edit that. So this is pretty straightforward. All we're doing is putting in the exports that we want to use. Uh, in this case, I have a couple of exports set that are very useful. So I've said my cache directory is going to be read through that um, VMware share. Uh, in this case, I have a directory that has all our cache called the Crowbar Build Cache. For our team, we actually uh, store that in a repo so that we can consistently build against the same repos um, instead of pulling them from the internet every time. It's a huge, huge time saver. Uh, improves consistency too. Uh, my ISO library directory is where I keep the ISOs that are necessary for uh, the operating system deployment. So CentOS, Red Hat, and Ubuntu. Uh, the ISO destination, this is sort of fun. Um, I actually don't store the ISO in the VM. That would take up a lot of disk space. I store it back on my local hard disk through the, uh, the shared mount. So this goes back into the directory where I build uh, and install Crowbar from. So I never have to do any extra transfers. 
And then uh, this identifies my sledgehammer directory. So my sledgehammer directory also comes from outside of the VM. So by setting up this um, build crowbar comp file, which effectively tells the build where to go look for things, I have managed to not have to ever bring uh, external dependencies into the VM. I just build up whatever the latest code is, very straightforward, and then I uh, build it. I actually have a series of scripts and things. I do the same thing. I can run those scripts from my hard disk uh, and saves me a lot of transferring back and forth. So now that I've done that, I can go back to my crowbar directory. And of course, I could leave that in my snapshot. Uh, I started with a clean snapshot so that I could show you this process. Uh, and then, so you can turn around crowbar builds very, very quickly using this type of uh, process. <laughs> so one of the things I need to do, is I don't want to stall in Ubuntu, what I really want to do is do a uh, CentOS 5.7 install. So the way you specify the operating system you want is by adding it. Uh, let me show you before I do that. So what we've done is uh, see where it says CentOS 5.7 Extra, Ubuntu 10.10 Extra, uh, Red Hat 5.7 Extra. Those are basically, the that parameter flag is telling it to look in those directories to pull in the build components for that operating system variant. So if you wanted to add a new operating system, you would add a new directory uh, and then start troubleshooting um, the OS differences between that operating system and another one. Uh, please, if you want to do that, coordinate with us on the list. Uh, we have a lot of people with interest in building different operating system uh, variants into Crowbar. So, uh, CentOS. So now we should get to the point and it's going to attach to the CentOS image rather than the, there you go, rather than the Ubuntu image. And it's going to go through and do its build stuff. So it's going to take a little while. I'm going to pause uh, the video and come back to you when it's done. So we finished, we built the ISO. Uh, in this case, in a normal crowbar build, default crowbar build, I should say, you would uh, see the ISO directory here. It's not since we changed it. I can see it instead in my uh, crowbar directory along with a half dozen other ISOs that I've made. Uh, in this case, uh, I believe it's going to be the Crowbar Cactus 1369 ISO. Uh, so that's the story of how this is going to play out. Um, pretty straightforward from that perspective, and hopefully this video will help you uh, be able to uh, turn local builds. Uh, to, if I wanted to pull another build, I can just do a git pull. It's going to bring in Crowbar. Of course, nothing's changed in the last 15 minutes. Uh, and then I can do a git submodule update. Uh, once again, nothing's changed, so everything's uh, pretty straightforward. It, the goal here is for you to be able to pull in and build Crowbar ISOs, uh, shorten your test time, and, and be able to get to a much faster um, cadence on bringing in and keeping up with the latest uh, Crowbar bits. Happy coding!